let's talk about Toronto. Has the Toronto audience, I mean grown in size, but grown in appetite, oh, vision, oh, I think so. humor in? I think so. I think, and possibility of what's possible. I mean, you've had more plays where you've got individual actors just up there telling their stories and compelling an audience for two hours. Um, well, hopefully 90 minutes, <laughs> one person talking about it. But um, possibility of, of genre, of form, uh, of stories. Um, this is a, an incredible independent theater town that also sustains a commercial theater audience. And uh, I, what this town has, I, I hope the government supports anybody, uh, any theater that's struggling still as a result of the drought of COVID because it's unique. I mean, you can go to a place like Boston, it's mostly rentals and actors all go to, like most of them, it's hard to sustain a career because it's that close to New York, so they go to New York. Chicago tells another story, does not have our degree of independent theater, our independent festivals. And I mean, this town, there's, it's, it's amazing what it can do for your skill set. Edmonton's another great town too. Vancouver's another story, it's another kind of theater. Um, but audiences are getting, the Canadian theater audiences are very, very special. And not specialized. I think they entertain, Mervish is so clever because they've got that off Mervish season and they, they get to, they try to tell different stories too and not just commercially viable stories. Um, I think that's really smart because he's, uh, he and his people are culling from the right, best of right. Toronto Indie Theatre. So it's, it's a great town. Fiona, thank you. Thank you. I never thought we'd be able to talk for three hours. Point. I don't know how you do it, but we did.